Hey there, I hope you're doing well. Today we're going to be taking a look at using HTC's Vive Tracker in OpenXR. And this is something I've been asked about quite a bit recently, and unfortunately my response was usually, it's coming, hopefully, we'll see, I actually don't know. But recently I was going through the Unity forums, because I'm kind of a weirdo, and I stumbled across this thread where someone had put together a controller profile for the Vive Tracker. So obviously credit where credit is due, I did not come up with the solution, but I think there's a little bit of setup that I think would be useful to share with all of you. But I'll have a link to that forum post down in the description, so you can go download the file for yourself. And I already have a basic Unity project up and running, it's just the project I use when I'm just sort of doing general development. And I'm not doing anything special here, I just have the most recent version of Unity 2020 and the verified version of OpenXR. But once you kind of have a project that you kind of got up and running, we just want to click and drag that script into our project. And then we're going to want to go to Edit. We're going to want to go to our Project Settings. And we'll go to our Interaction Profiles, where if we hit our plus sign here, you'll see that we now have this HTC Vive Tracker profile. So let's add that. And at this point, you may be thinking to yourself, well, we're practically done at this point, but uh, there's an extra step that we're going to have to do within SteamVR to get this all working properly. So I'm going to pull over my SteamVR window here. And you'll see that I have my Vive Tracker here. It's all currently tracking and it's all set up and good to go. I'm going to right click within my SteamVR window. I'm going to hit settings and I'm going to hit this button that just says manage trackers. And you'll notice that here's my tracker here and we can set it up with a roll. And you'll see that it has the left foot, the shoulder, elbow, knee, and all that good stuff. So when you have multiple Vive trackers up and running, you can map it to particular parts of your body. If you're like me and you only have one tracker, this doesn't necessarily matter too much, uh, but uh, you just wanna select one of these. I don't believe the held in hand currently works, so just make sure you're selecting between the, the foot as well as the keyboard. And I'm just gonna click camera for the time being. The biggest thing is just to make sure that you remember what role you're gonna be using for this next step. So we can close out of our SteamVR settings, we'll get rid of this, and we don't need our project settings anymore. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna make sure that our Vive Tracker is actually sending information to our Unity project. So we, if we hit play, and you'll see in our console we have the extension has been enabled and we have a device that's been added. But now let's see if we can actually get some values. If we go up to Window, we're gonna to go to Analysis, and then we'll go to our Input Debugger. And you'll notice, that we have all of these different Vive Tracker profiles essentially. And if you kind of just start clicking through them or opening them up, you'll see that we're kind of getting some updates here, but we don't actually have any data here. This is where it's gonna make sense to remember that particular profile that you, you chose. And since I chose the camera, let's double click that. And for this to work, you're gonna to to make sure that you are activating the presence sensor on your headset. Since I'm using a Vive headset currently, I just have my thumb over the headset to make sure that uh, we can actually start pulling some of the values. If you just hit play and you're doing this, we're not gonna get any actual values. So to kind of illustrate my previous point that we can we're actually see that this is working properly, let's go back to just the left shoulder and you'll see that we're not actually getting any updates here. And that's all looking pretty good, but we need to actually kind of put this to the input system so we can then use it on an object within our scene. We'll close our input debugger. We'll stop playing. And I'm going to create a new input action set. And you can call this whatever you want. I'm just going to call it Vive Tracker Input. And we'll open that up. And we're going to create an action map that we'll just call this Vive Tracker. And we're gonna have two actions here, one for the position and another for the rotation. So we'll just name this one position and this other one rotation. And this action is gonna be of type value and it's gonna be a vector three. And then we'll go to this drop down here. And this is where we're gonna, it's gonna get a little tricky actually. And we're gonna have to again, remember that particular tracker profile that we used. Because if we come in here, you'll see that we now have this XR tracker. And if we click that, we'll have these generic positions that you may find some success in, but I could get the position to work, but not the rotation. So when in doubt, let's just be very specific. So let's go to the HTC Vive Tracker, and we'll have all of those sort of profiles that we saw previously. I'm gonna to go to the camera, and I'm just going to use the device position. And then we'll do the similar thing for the rotation. We'll go to action type value. 
the type, we're going to make it a quaternion. We'll expand that for our binding. And we'll be in the same area, so we'll just need to click device rotation. And to make sure that you've done it correctly, it should have the sort of selection that you have, the Vive Tracker, and then OpenXR. So that looks good. Let's hit save. And we'll leave this open in case we need to come back to it. And let's go to our scene view, where I have a very basic scene here. I'm just going to go to this game object that I've called tracked object, where this is just a simple cube. There's nothing fancy going on. And we'll go to our add component. And we're going to want to do a tracked pose driver and make sure it's the one with the input system in parentheses. And we're going to want to set up our references. So we'll hit the checkbox on both of these so we can use the, those input actions we just set up. And if you're unfamiliar with some of this, I do have other videos that go deeper into the input system itself, as well as custom input actions and how they relate to VR. But now that we have that, let's open up our references and we'll just type Vive Tracker position and we'll do Vive Tracker rotation. There we go. And at this point, we should be good to go. Let's save this. Let's hit play. And I always do this. The one thing, um, and one thing that we need to remember is that we actually need to activate our input actions. So let's go back to our scene here. We'll create a new empty game object, reset its position, and we'll add the component input action manager. And we actually want to create or add that input action asset that we created. So if you're already using XR Toolkit, you most likely already have the default input actions already set up. We just want to make sure we add this one as well. And let's just name this really quick to our input action manager. Let's make sure we save that. And now let's try it again. And there we go. We actually have our Vive Tracker working in Unity using OpenXR and actually wasn't too painful. So that's about it for me in this video. Hopefully you found it useful. If you'd like to contribute to the channel, I'll have a bunch of links down in the description, but that's about it for me. I'll see y'all in the next one.